Hello everyone, I'm Lewis Butler. I'm with Simple Ray. We were formerly known as Iowa Wind and Solar. We'll give everyone just another 30 seconds to a minute to go ahead and get in here for our 12:15 start. If you're not familiar with who we are, you can always get a hold of us on our website, simpleray.com, 1-800-8080-SUN, and be bright at simpleray.com. If you have any questions, during the webinar today, there is a chat over there on the right-hand side. Feel free to ask questions. We have a few people on the team staying by to answer those. We'd love to connect with you either during or afterwards. If we don't get to your question during the webinar, please reach out or we'll try to reach out to you to make sure you have everything that you uh, need to know there. So what is uh, today's webinar about? Today's webinar is about the ever popular and very thick currently uh, adjustable block program. So we're going to be talking about how is, it, how is it funded. A lot of people are worried about that. We're going to talk about the new finalized block pricing. We're going to talk about what the blocks mean and how the blocks will be transitioned because the incentive structure is going to go down over time. And what does this mean for you as a customer or someone who's looking to install solar? So the, for the first uh, part here, just a little bit about the adjustable block, block program in Illinois they have a target of having 25% of the renewable energy um, or 25% of their electric portfolio come from, come from renewables by 2025. So this adjustable block program is a financial incentive for people to install solar or wind uh, to help get them to that goal. So what it does is it pays people for installing and producing clean energy. And so this payment system is structured on a block program, which we're going to get to in a minute. Essentially, depending on the size of your system and what utility company that you're on, that's going to dictate how much you get paid. So on June 4th, they finalized several of the blocks and what those payments are going to look like. So it adds a lot of predictability. First question here, how is the adjustable block program funded? When they were drafting the rules around this and the laws, they realized that a lot of people don't necessarily trust the state of Illinois and uh, their finances. So what they did is the utility companies have a fund that they've set aside money in. And so technically, if we're going to be a little wonky here, the money is being held by the utility company and the contract will be between Simple Ray or another installer. I know we have many installers and utility companies watching today. Uh, the contract is between us and the utility company that's buying those renewable energy credits. So the function of the state in this case, or the IPA, is simply to administer the program. So they finalized the rules in late April, or beginning of April, they finalized the pricing uh, about a week and a half ago, and then that pricing and those rules are gonna be used to build out an administrative arm over the summer. So the, the block program will officially start this fall once they have this administrative arm in place. So it's important to recognize it's not a taxpayer funded initiative, uh, it's being funded by the utility companies. So how does this work? So we have the final pricing for the blocks and the transition between the blocks. This is the latest payout that they have released on June 4th. So you can see based upon the size of the system that gets installed and which group you're in will dictate how much you get paid. So if you're going to try to back of the envelope, figure out you know, what, what is my potential adjustable block payment going to be? Uh, these are in megawatt hours. So you'd want to divide this number by 1,000. So 8510, for example, divide by 1,000 gives you about 8 cents per kilowatt hour. Multiply that by your annual production and then multiply that number by 15. So in all of our proposals that we put together, we calculate this and build it in as part of the proposal. So what, who is in Group A? Group A is made up of Ameren, Mid-American, uh, Mount Carmel, and all the MISO uh, co-ops and municipalities that sell electricity. Group B is going to be primarily ComEd, and the PJM co-op and municipalities are basically the, the Chicagoland area there. So this is how you figure out if you are in Group A or Group B. There's one other distinction which we did not put in our, our very good looking table, but they do break out in uh, you know, the PDF that they released. This under 10 kW, that's considered a small block. And then the 10 kW and above up to two megs, that's considered the large block. And that's gonna be important when we're transitioning between blocks. 
So if you're a commercial client or uh, you have a farm or you're gonna do a much bigger installation, you're gonna be primarily in what we would consider the large block. So they've set aside money specifically for under 10 kW systems and then 10 kW up to two megawatts. Anything that would be in a community solar installation, uh, we haven't included here. We're focused primarily on these commercial systems that a lot of people are gonna purchase. So as you can see, the larger the installation gets, the smaller the incentive is going to be. Uh, the idea behind this is that these prices should reflect the cost per watt of installation. So as you build larger and larger systems, the cost of adding an additional panel will go down, or you know, once the crew is on site, you'll be able to uh, get a lot more work done. It's, it's simply getting on site that uh, is the challenge part of the time. So what this means for you is you're gonna get paid to adopt solar, and the sooner that you install, uh, the better off you're going to be. So this is the first block. And actually, uh, the nomenclature here gets a little messy in my opinion, but there are multiple first blocks. So for group A, 10 kW and under, there is a first block. For group B, 10 kW and under, there is a first block. For group A, 10 kW to uh, two megs, there is a first block. So there are four first blocks uh, when we're looking at this graph here. So if a bunch of homeowners rush out and install solar uh, in group A, uh, they might eat through the available funding or they actually allotted a certain amount of volume uh, to be in that first block. And once that volume is used up, then the incentive structure steps down. So if you go read through the program and the proposed rules from the IPA, they've tried to structure these blocks so that they think they'll last approximately one year. That being said, I would not rely upon that in any way, shape, or form. The law that was passed that opened the Adjustable Block Program up, if you installed since June 1st of 2017 all the way through present day, you are eligible for the Adjustable Block Program. So we currently don't know how much solar has definitively been installed since the program was started to today, and it's going to be hard to forecast how much is going to be installed in the coming months prior to these first blocks opening. So it's conceivable that group A, block one, uh, 10 to 2000 kW, uh, maybe that will fill up very quickly, but maybe ComEd, uh, maybe their block doesn't fill up as quickly. And so once a block fills up, you're gonna transition to a, a lower payment. Thankfully, uh, the utility companies and the IPA have, have thought ahead on this. And so when the program opens this fall, the first block is gonna be open for at least 45 days. So if it gets filled up, if it doesn't get filled up, no matter what, that first block will be open for 45 days. So if you have already installed or you're looking to install by this fall or you're looking to do a project this year, we can look at getting your application in as soon as the program opens. And what they're going to do is they're going to, uh, they've set aside a certain amount of capacity on the grid to be installed for the first block. If more than that capacity is reached, because they realize a lot of people are gonna try to sign up while the incentives are the highest, they're going to basically allow that volume to double uh, before they start cutting things off. So if they hit 200% of their goal, then they're gonna switch over to a lottery system. So we're in this period of, it feels like they've made the block sufficiently big, they've done enough foresight or had enough foresight, um, but we won't know until, until this fall hits. So uh, if it were me, I would be looking to have my installation done or at least my paperwork getting filed to try to get into that first block uh, to make sure I didn't get bumped to the second or third block. So after block one is open for at least 45 days, if it's filled up, it will close. They'll allocate uh, that money. If blocks two and three, um, they will only uh, keep them open for 14 days after they are filled. So there's gonna be an online portal where you can watch to see how much uh, money has been allocated and how much capacity has been added uh, to the system underneath the, the block program. So they, they're going to see how things go for this first 45 days, and then they're going to take a look at the program and go from there. So uh, that is a, a brief overview there. Um, I'm just going to look at my notes real quick. Um, it looks like uh, I've covered uh, most, of the, most of my talking points here. The one other thing is that in order to be 
um, eligible for the adjustable block program, there's lots of requirements on the installation side or on the, the company that's selling you the array. So we have to go through the process of becoming an approved vendor. So we have to do some training. We have to submit some paperwork. We have to show that we're a well-established and respected uh, company. So if you have someone who's an electrician who's doing a one-off uh, installation for you, it'd be worth making sure that they've gone through and they've done uh, the checklist of things to be required so that they can submit these contracts uh, with the IPA so that you can make sure that uh, the money will be flowing uh, appropriately. Uh, we've also run into some situations where a company has sold solar to customers uh, but not told them even about the adjustable block program. They've only promoted the uh, financial incentives in the terms of tax credits and depreciation uh, and they are just going to apparently keep that adjustable block money for themselves and not even bother applying. So it's, it's worth understanding uh, how this process works and that at this point we are just waiting on the IPA and the administrative piece of this program uh, to come into place. So between now and when the program starts, we can absolutely be installing solar. We can be adhering to best practices and appropriate codes in the appropriate locations. That's gonna be the thing that uh, really sets up this eligibility piece. Um, so uh, people are asking uh, some questions here. Do we have that formula in writing? Uh, I don't have it in writing uh, right now, but uh, we'd be happy to email that to you uh, afterwards. Um, what is the kilowatt per hour calculation? It's a question from John. Uh, the amount of kilowatt hours that your array is going to produce is going to depend on a bunch of variables. Uh, it's going to depend on the size of the system that you install, and it's going to depend on the orientation, angle, and location of that array. So if you had an array that was pointing, uh, I don't know, at the ground uh, or is heavily shaded by a bunch of trees, uh, your production would be pretty low. And we would model that out and your payment as a result would be lower than someone who might have a tracking array that follows the sun uh, east-west during the day. So we uh, typically use a multiplier, which we don't want to get into right now, but I'm sure one of our sales reps or engineers uh, would love to have that conversation with you and talk you through why we think uh, our numbers are very accurate. The potential is out there for people to uh, sell systems that they claim are going to produce a lot of electricity, uh, but if they don't hit those uh, lofty goals they set out there uh, and they're just trying to grab a bunch of money from the adjustable block program, uh, people are ultimately going to be on the hook to repay that money uh, to the utility company because in some sense the utility company is buying 15 years worth of uh, renewable energy production from you. So if you install under 10 kW, they're going to pay that out all in year one. If, they, if you install a larger than 10 kW system, they're gonna pay out 20% per year. The rules from the IPA don't clearly lay out how that payment structure is gonna take place. They recommend 20% uh, when uh, the contract is approved and then quarterly payments throughout the year so that they can match uh, the payments along to make sure that uh, production is actually occurring. Uh, the utility companies don't wanna be in a position where they're paying for renewable energy credits uh, that ultimately never uh, get produced. Um, so the question is, is the contractor or the aggregator doing the megawatt hour calculation to determine production? So as it sits in the rules right now, uh, we do our calculation based upon uh, the historical weather data that we use and the calibration of our engineering tools. And then when we apply for the contract in these batches with the IPA and we enter into these contracts, we have to justify our numbers by using industry recognized tools or explaining how we've come up with our numbers. And uh, if, if we don't meet those criteria, ultimately it is a black mark on us when we start applying for more and more contracts. And this will be monitored throughout the uh, length of the program. And we have a portfolio um, that they will be taking a look at to make sure that we're representing uh, things accurately. Hopefully that, that answers your, your question there for you, John. I can't tell if John is a potential customer here or He's uh, someone else who uh, is working at another company. So I hope, hope we've been a good source of information for you. If you can hear a little bit of rain, it just started raining really hard out there. Um, I can just start uh, opening up this 170 page document and reading my uh, favorite passages to you if you don't have uh, any other questions.
Um, there was a little bit of a misconception out there. We've talked to a few people who they might be on a co-op or uh, municipality, and earlier in the year, uh, it wasn't clear that they were going to be eligible for the adjustable block program. Uh, the court ruling came, has come out since then that uh, has allowed uh, basically everyone in Illinois to become eligible for the adjustable block program, uh, but these municipalities or co-ops uh, might not be on, uh, might not have a net metering policy. So even in those situations, the adjustable block program can look sufficiently good so that it can be a worthwhile investment when you combine it with the federal tax credit and any depreciation that you might be able to take advantage of. So if you're in Southern Illinois or you are a, um, or anywhere in that, that's rural that is on one of these utilities, uh, we should definitely be looking into this for you. I looked at uh, some utility bills the other day, a particular customer, they were on demand in Illinois on a uh, co-op and they're still paying nine cents per kilowatt hour, even after they're paying for their demand chargers, which were I think seven cents per kilowatt hour. So if you're paying enough for electricity, even if you're on demand, even if you're on a utility company that does not have a favorable net metering policy, uh, the adjustable block program can, can still work for you and still make your project look good. So if uh, we are out of questions here, uh, we, will, we will wrap up. I would recommend that you definitely go to our website, simpleray.com. You can shoot me an email, Lewis Butler, L-E-W-I-S-B-U-T-L-A-R, at simpleray.com. We'd love to answer any of your questions. We'd love to have long conversations with you about how this is going to work out. Our goal is to be a source of information. We have to work with utility companies every day. We get to work with customers every day. We want to make sure everyone's on the same page and the solar industry is represented well. Um, the bottom question there, co-op municipality utilities are allowed in this program. Uh, as of right now, they are. There's going to be a um, comment has the opportunity to challenge the latest ruling that allowed municipalities and co-ops to be included. If my memory serves me correctly, I think they might have four or five days to, to file uh, in court if they wish to challenge that ruling. Otherwise, they will be included. Um, our service area in Illinois, we're trying to cover, or not we're trying, we're covering all of Illinois. Uh, we'd like to look at the permitting requirements and where you're located at, but we, we work throughout the Midwest, whether it's Minnesota, Missouri, uh, Wisconsin. I know we got some people in Michigan uh, on this webinar right now, they're taking a look at what's going on. We, we understand the incentives in all of these states and we're happy to talk through the project no matter where you're located at. Um, are the blocks tracked online at the IPA? The blocks will be tracked uh, from the, by the IPA online once they have the administrative uh, piece set up. Uh, Mr. Veerman asks, or Mr. Veerman, uh, if the system produces fewer than projected SRACs, does the homeowner have to uh, make a refund? Uh, currently that part is uh, not entirely clear. This can be dependent upon the contract that comes out that set up between the utility companies and whoever your installer is. So if the contract is, is written a certain way, they might become responsible or the company who installed it will ultimately be responsible. Um, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how that plays out. I wish I had a better answer right now, but uh, we're just there's a little bit of vagueness still left in some of these things. Uh, David asks, uh, can you discuss the timeline for the SRAC payouts once the system is commissioned? If it's under 10 kW, you're going to get paid as soon as that paperwork is submitted and approved. Their goal is to approve batches of applications uh, at least every other week. So hopefully those payments come out very quickly. It's going to be entirely dependent upon the IPA and the utility companies at that point. Uh, they'll be out of our hands once the system is on and commissioned and approved. Um, if it's larger than that, uh, they're going to pay out 20% once they get that final approval. And then they're going to pay out 20% per year. Uh, you know, call it a five-year span you can, but really uh, it'd be happy in over four, four to five-year span. Um, John asks, are deadlines related to application or installation? Are schools, colleges, et cetera, eligible? Uh, we'll answer the second piece of this. Schools, colleges, uh, churches, nonprofits, everyone who uses electricity is eligible. Uh, the math can be a little bit more interesting in how you're going to fund some of those projects, but absolutely are eligible. They have set aside $5 million in additional adjustable block program payments for nonprofits. 
but the rules around that are very vague right now. And considering the number of nonprofits and the size of uh, some of these systems, we expect that money to go very quickly. So we have not been actively promoting that as something that uh, any customer should be expecting if uh, that's something that applies to them. Um, the deadlines, as my current understanding, are related to the application uh, that goes in. So there are some collateral requirements on our side. So some money does have to be put up when you submit your application uh, to kind of prevent a bunch of applications from flooding in. And if too many of our applications end up not getting installed, they'll definitely flag an approved vendor for abuse of the system and have to have some retroactive explanation as to why some of these projects didn't go forward. But um, that's something that we could definitely look at and address if the timing were going to work out better to try to get that application in at the, the right point. Um, so if you ever ask, can a homeowner apply through the money or must it go through an aggregator? Um, I'm not entirely clear how easy it would be for a homeowner to apply. They want you to be on the approved vendor list. And even once you're on the approved vendor list, they are looking for groups of contracts to be submitted together. So they aren't going to look at uh, just one 50KW project. They want you to submit a 50KW project plus a 20KW project. And they want them in, I think, in batches of at least 100. Uh, I think there is a way for a one-time application uh, to get into the program. Uh, I'm just not very familiar with what the, the rules are around that. Um, Jeff asked, with Solar for All program, the IPA report uh, states payment upon commissioning. Is that true? Um, you definitely need to be able to, uh, you have to have the contract approved, basically. Or, excuse me, it has to be, uh, everyone has to go through the sign-off process. So if you're commissioned and you submit the paperwork, uh, then they're supposed to be processing payment. Um, I hope that, that clarifies uh, that question. Uh, we do not currently know uh, when the IPA is going to be ready to accept applications on the website. They will ask you to be uh, very patient and they hope by, uh, quote unquote, this fall. So we are eagerly awaiting uh, the opening of the program, uh, but I can imagine there's a bit of paperwork and legality to do before they are ready to go. So our current plan is, is to that now that we have a definitive answer on what those incentives are, what they're going to look like, what it's going to take for us to become an approved vendor, uh, we are going to uh, keep going so that our customers can be uh, in that first block and take advantage of the highest level incentives that are possible. So we are actively out designing, installing, and helping our customers out today. Uh, the similar rate charge a fee to handle the block, uh, money application and processing. Uh, so what we do is when, when we install a system, as you can see this uh, sign behind me, we try to make everything really simple. So if you buy a system through us, we try to take it through A to Z for you. So we will handle any permitting, any, any application process, and fees that are associated with it. So it is a very uh, turnkey solution, and you don't need to read the 170 pages or call up the IPA over the week trying to get clarification on a rule that they, they have not finalized yet. Uh, despite their best efforts. They are working around the clock. We are very thankful for their efforts. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we will definitely handle that on behalf of any customer who installs through us. I appreciate the, uh, the kudos there. Uh, we've been going for 23, 24 minutes here. We'll give it another 30 seconds to a minute uh, to see if any other questions pop up. Uh, if you do have any other questions about, you know, the state of uh, the Iowa tax credits or Missouri just recently passed some really exciting incentives or you want to see what's going on in Wisconsin and how they set aside their pool of money, uh, definitely give me a call. We'd be happy to answer those policy questions and take a look at your project. Uh, Mr. Perkins asked when we expect them to be ready to accept applications. We would expect them to be ready. They claim uh, this fall. You know, whether fall means September 1st to you or it means November 31st, uh, who knows what that actual date is going to look like. We're hoping that they're going to give a lot of clarification around that. To the IPA's credit, they have tried to, uh, at length, explain uh, the process that they're working through and be very upfront about their programs. They, they don't want anyone to be misled or uh, be unfamiliar with um, what's going to be happening. Uh, David asked, what are the approximate costs per installed watt with current state of art for plant in the megawatt range? 
Um, I would imagine that uh, I'm just going to give a broad range here depending on the project. For larger projects, uh, you're probably looking somewhere between that uh, $1 to $2 uh, per watt range. On those commercial projects, you might be looking, uh, say, anywhere from a dollar to two fifty per watt, very loosely speaking. Uh, once you start to get into smaller projects, you know the expense is getting there. You're looking somewhere between, I will say, two and four dollars per watt for uh, a homeowner, depending on what your electrical setup looks like and and how uh, we have to set that up. Uh, Jeff asked, "Does your company register the system and GAT?" Uh, slash MRETs. Uh, that is going to be a requirement. I, I know it's in there, but uh, we will be registering and monitoring the systems as required uh, by the IPA and the contracts uh, with the utility companies. So we will be keeping track and uh, we'll be very accountable for everything that will be going on. Uh, without looking, Jeff, I think that's somewhere, I'm going to guess somewhere between page 115 and 130 of the uh, adjustable block program book there that we could open up and get a little bit more clarification there. All right. This is very interesting. Watching Everyone gets to watch me wait for more questions. So um, we hope everyone has learned a whole lot here. We're always going to be available. Please reach out to us. Go check out our website, simpleray.com. Uh, we've discussed the adjustable block program. I think this is our third or fourth adjustable block program webinar. I'm sure we will have more. We just want people to have a clear understanding. Uh, even if you decide not to install with us, if you have someone else who has a proposal and you're not even going to shop it around, give us a call. We'd love to take a look at it uh, and just offer our advice. Uh, we want the solar industry to be well, well represented, and uh, we hope to be part of that conversation. Um, so hope you have a great day, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone.